Dan said Dorothy Turner and Nancy Garson. Please describe your program. Um, Nehewa Win Cree Language Program is what the uh, program that we offer at the Faculty of Native Studies at the University of Alberta. And what it entails is having the uh, Cree language course offered in introductory, uh, intermediate, and advanced Cree language. And we also have uh, independent study that the students can take, which is the NS404, which is a selected topics course. We also have the Cree immersion program in the summer, and it's offered through the Canadian Indigenous Language and Literacy Development Institute. What is the uh, aim of the program? Okay, the aim of the program is uh, to build um, the awareness of our of the language, the importance of the language, which could be like fluency in the language, uh, knowing who you are as an Nehio, like learning that your identity and the culture is very important to us as Nehio work. And to also understand the comprehension, the content of the context of the language, the healing, like many of us can be on a healing journey. And the aim of that would be to give guidance to others that are need some healing. And also to be able to build fluency through reading and writing. So a lot of our language program is based on structure of the Cree language. So the students have to learn the structures of the Cree language through morphemes and also derivations of the language as well. And in the intermediate and the advanced language courses, we also offer syllabics, which was from way back, like before even Roman orthography, we had a lot of the syllabics. And with that, it's a living spirit. So learning uh, the stories behind the syllabic symbols as well is a huge component of our Cree language. Um, do you notice a difference or a change in uh, students from the beginning of class, at the beginning of the year to like near the end? At the beginning of the class of the year, the students are very quiet, very almost like they don't really know each other. And then as time progresses, they are more comfortable. So it's like coming in there as an individual. Uh, not really speaking to each other, and then as time progresses, they begin to grow. And now it's like building a community. They feel like there's a sense of belonging in the classroom. Have you uh, received feedback from uh, other, other past students or other teachers about uh, the program you're teaching? Well, through the uh, evaluations, I do get the evaluations when at the end of the year. So I get to see what the students' feedback is through there. And also individually, like they'll come into the office and talk to me about the language program and what they what their thoughts are on it. And also with the assistance of the TA and the other, my co-instructors uh, who work in the Cree language program as well. So we kind of like feed each other ideas on what worked, what we could do, other ways of introducing new ideas of how best practices in teaching Cree. What, in your opinion, makes this an example of excellence in Indigenous education? For me, uh, in Indigenous education entails a lot. So we're talking about the history of the language, uh, the kinship wagutun, and for me, the teachers would be the elders. They would be like the PhD holders. That's my, my thoughts on really indigenous education, is learning the, the roots of it all, 
right? Where did it come from? Uh, where are we going with this? And what it looked like before a long time ago and comparing it to the way it looks today. So for me, it'd be talking about and learning about the hunting, the trapping, the fishing, the resources that are available today, and the health, like the plants that that we have, like the medicinal uses for them, and understanding how to pick them and when they are harvested. So all of that is very important. Also, the wellness of our, our health and well-being to prayers to ceremony and also meditation right so just looking after yourself is very important before you can help anybody else and then doing it through like the traditional knowledge systems right so being calm content and making sure that you're looking after you right because if you can't do that you're gonna be sick and you're not going to think properly, right? So you need to make sure that you have um, the looking after your health and well-being. And also we talk about song and dance, right? So all the different songs that we have are very important. All the different types of dances that are introduced in uh, Botsamoan or Bixiwin. And also learning about our own inherent rights uh, the natural laws, like having a deep understanding of all of that, what happened a long time ago, and how we dealt with those, even within the community or as an individual. Like, for instance, if somebody um, did something, and then, like, we don't just lock you up, okay? We're going to look after you and introduce you, integrate you back into the community so the elders will come up with a plan how to get that person back in and more welcomed back into the community so that you're not like ostracizing that person. And also learning the traditional concepts like the value of the family and the community, right? And how we can work together in a healthy manner. And learning the importance of the different ceremonies and the rituals which is kind of more like a personal journey because it's your own spiritual journey that you're going on. And I wouldn't say that we would have to ever enforce that on anybody. It's up to you if that's what you want to do. But that was something that was given to us by the Creator, and that's what we follow. Like the Hewak follow our own traditional ways on how we used to do things and the importance of it and having a deep understanding of it and teaching our children that as well as soon as they're born they're teaching that child how to do something the importance of it all so to think of it like right from the heart right from one's childbirth and then all the way to adulthood into being an elder so all of that stages of life, the rituals, like the rites of passage, all of that could be included in there as well. So for me, a lot of it could also be uh, a land-based practical teaching is the most important. Because if we're just going to sit and read a book, like really how much can you understand? First hand is always the best way. And then understanding all the steps necessary to get from here to there, right? Like seeing past your nose, right? There's so much that uh, can be encapsulated in there when you're there in real, right? Doing it like in the now, not like thinking about it. How do you measure the success in the program? For me, I see success when the students feel like they have are in a community and they belong somewhere and also they can communicate with me in the language like having an understanding of who they are where they come from and where they're headed and feeling good about it all yeah. right along with the reading and writing that comes with it so you're learning at an individual level and then also as a community and learning how to respect each other within that space 
So feeling very good about yourself, you know, learning about your identity and knowing that you do belong somewhere, you are important. And you're going to move from here, like there's growth in the program, there's growth in that person. And that, it's not all static, right? It's going to grow. So there's always changes, there's different ideas that you can incorporate into the program. But is the term Indigenous one that you would normally use? For me, Indigenous is more like a Munia word. It's a borrowed language for me, right? So that term is like... I don't really like to use it. I think of myself as Inuak as the first people of the land, and then as Nehio. Those are our words. That's our definition. But when I think about indigenous, it's more like something that defines you from a Munial perspective, like white man's knowledge. What is your vision for indigenous education over the next 10 years? Over the next 10 years? What I would like to see is to have a lot a more land-based teachings, uh, having the students visit the land, learning from our elders. They can be our teachers as well. And hearing more of the language, so possibilities of having a pre-immersion class or other uh, immersion classes like in different languages. So really expanding on that and becoming having other languages in here as well with the university, not just Nehewewin, but let's bring on like the Dene, the Soto, the Sioux. Like that's what I'd like to see is really expanding Faculty of Native Studies. But for, and that's, are you saying just like indigenous education overall? Yeah. Okay. So that part would cover like the language component of it, but indigenous education entails a lot, like really talking about the history of Canada and understanding it. And also uh, learning from our elders, like they share their stories and, and uh, we learn from them, right? So if there was a possibility of doing more of that, that would be great. And I know there's also technology that being that's being used. So I see that as being, can be helpful, right? If we don't have the speakers available, that the technology can be used. It's not gonna help you speak though, like how do you know that your, your fluency is going on par with what a real speaker would sound like. But I do see that as it's already there and it'll probably grow a little more. What information, materials, or resources would you need to achieve that vision? I guess the resources could be like being um, out on the land and then also having the indigenous knowledge keepers working with them every chance that you get and also working together as a community and bringing the children, the elders, the adult. Other things could be like what we just talked about uh, as well, like the materials, right? Because literacy is also important and it's not going to leave, right? So I think it's important that uh, the children also learn to read and also second language learners, right? Because I know my son absolutely wants to, like he, looks at dictionaries and then he'll say how come this one says this and this one says that so just looking at words right and then it kind of like they show more interest in doing it sometimes or just looking at apps and mm -hmm. increases their knowledge and it's right at your fingertips right yeah. these things are right there and they're like oh how would you say this, right? And there, it's like they're, um, how would you call that? Their interest, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're interested in wanting to learn more. How would you define education from an indigenous perspective? For me, education from an indigenous perspective is learning from our elders, being our teachers, our mentors, and also learning 
about our world views are different from the way people think they understand it. But seriously, looking at the richness of what's really going on and having a deep understanding of our educational system. Right, so it's pretty hard to kind of learn inside the walls of an institution when the true education for us is having it firsthand.